Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the Power of Perspective, the talk show. My name is Sean Francis Coleman and I am your host. Uh, this is episode two. I truly appreciate everybody who sent feedback via emails, all social media on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. Um, it was very constructive and I appreciate it. It sounds like everybody liked the first show. And I can't say that we had, um, you know, we, we didn't have any technical difficulty because it was just the win. We just outside having a good time. But uh, so, we, so we moved in inside. All right. Again, thank you very much. Uh, today we have a very awesome topic. I'm very excited about it because of uh, our guest, our second guest, and also just because I think it's a very interesting topic that you know everybody can probably empathize with. And the topic is the mistakes that I made in high school and college. The mistakes I made in high school and college. So I know that you guys are going to stay tuned in. Uh, before we get into that, um, we have an awesome, awesome, awesome uh, young woman in uh, Miss Samantha Pringle. She is a seasoned mental health uh, social worker, uh, just a phenomenal person. I had the opportunity to first meet her uh, in 20... 14? Was it, was, it, was it late 15. 20? It was 15. It started in January. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, so. but before you came, right? Right. Right, right. So it was 2014. 14, yeah. Yes, yes. But, you know, so thank you very much for being uh, on the show. I'm, I'm, very, I'm very excited. I know we've had several conversations Many. and discussions. So can you just tell the people a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. Um, like Sean was saying, I work at Duquesne Counseling Center. I am case manager, triage therapist there. I work with the students closely. Um, one of my favorite clientele to work with is the college population. Um, I got my graduate degree, so I'm MSW at Cal U University. So I spent my undergrad and my graduate years at California University, so I had many college years behind me that I can <laughs> most certainly talk about some mistakes that I have made. Oh, um, but after I graduated um, from Cal U, I started my field in working as a um, mobile therapist. I worked with autism kids, so a young population. Um, highly enjoyed it, but I must say I really like working with you know this population versus working with the little kids. It, it's fun, isn't it? It is, oh, it's so fun. Yeah, yeah. It is so fun. And I think, too, like being very young professionals, yes. these students see us not only as professionals, but, you know, kind of comparison in the age. Right. Um, and the things that I feel like they can tell us and really be like, you know, true and be like, I can really trust this person. Right. They're not judging me. I, I feel like they've been through it, which right. we absolutely have, right. you know, right. um, even though we're professionals. and. Just the connection, I think, is phenomenal. That's why I enjoy working with them. Oh man, it's, you're right. Like it makes it, ma it makes it you know a relatable experience. Yeah. You know, you know, kind of kind of like a, I know peer specialists are, are pretty. I want to say it's it's, it's a hot uh, profession out right now, but being a peer spec, people who have gone through like a problem like drug and alcohol yeah. addiction, mm -hmm. you know, they'll hire somebody like that to to work with people who are still experiencing difficulty with that. Well, yeah, I mean, just even with my background of social work, a lot of my colleagues like wanted to get into social work because they had they went through something right. in their life right. that it was just like you know what this happened i overcame it now i want to share my story i want to be able to help someone right. and you know most certainly can relate to that but you sometimes find yourself in session with the college students and you're kind of like sitting there listening to what brings them in it's just like i've been there exactly. before you know yeah. so not only can you give them, you know, the professional aspect of it, but kind of your own personal, right, you know, right. success story, personal advice with it. Right. That's awesome, that's awesome, that's awesome. You know, uh, I told you that, uh, you know, you know, she was a phenomenal, you probably, I'm, I know you can't say a woman's age, but you know, she is very young, but she's I very, am. She's, I'm old too. <laughs> she's very wise, she's <laughs> very wise for uh, her age, and I think that's one of her, uh, uh, her salient attributes. So with with that said, you know, um, I, you know, you had touched upon just the fact that you know, you know, at the counseling center, you know, and it's probably the same for counseling centers, you know, around the country, mm -hmm. and, and not just counseling centers, but probably high school students, you know, yeah. um, um, and really and really people in general, because we also want to talk to parents, you, you know, you know, who are who have maybe high school college yep. age kids, but who also been in that themselves, maybe they're still experiencing some trouble with what they, you know, went through in high school. Oh. You know, Absolutely. You know. I mean, we got just getting some phone calls about parents, you know, saying, I'm worried about my student, you know, yeah. they're coming into college, this is what they're experiencing, what do I do? Right. You know, so right. you're kind of, you know, coaching the, the parent, and as you're listening, you kind of can hear, like, 
I think maybe they kind of went through something exactly. and they didn't handle it maybe the appropriate way or their parents didn't hear it, right. handle it. So it's like, what do I do now? My daughter's son's right. going ooh, through it, ooh. you know? You know what? That actually is such a good point. You know, maybe we can even start there because, you know, maybe, is there a gap? Is yep. there is there a gap between, you know, cause sometimes we repress things and then we have kids and then, oh my gosh, my kids going through the same thing and then the parent is, is triggered back to an yes. experience that yes. they've had. So speak to a little bit, you know, before we get into the mistakes we have made, maybe speak to a little bit of that scenario. Yeah, well, you know, I agree, like repressed thoughts is, you know, can most certainly happen. You go through a traumatic or you just go through a time period where college, high school, some things happened, mm -hmm. you know, um, you were going through a rough time, maybe their parents at that time didn't know how to handle it, and, you know, we all grow up, you mm -hmm. know, we all, you know, eventually can mature and learn from our mistakes, but sometimes we think we learn, but we really don't. We kind of right. just push them under the rug right. and move on and keep moving on, right. so and I think when, good. you know, when you have kids and you see they're kind of going through what you went through, it was all out of sight, out of mind, but then once you see your kid going through it, it's like, oh, crap right. <laughs> that's what I went right, through right. I didn't handle it the best way right. so then that's when the parents are like they don't know how to handle it with their son or daughters right. and sometimes it can come off as you know well, mom and dad's not really supportive mom right. and dad really don't want to talk to me about it but that's sometimes not the case you right. know the the mother or the father might have went through the same situation maybe doesn't feel comfortable telling their son or daughter exactly you know but that's the best thing being transparent mm. with your son or daughter mm. saying listen i've been there you know i might have not made the best you know recovery from it i my choices might have not been the best but this happens right. you will get through it right. rather than just saying oh crap i didn't handle that the right way i don't know what to tell my son or daughter i'm just going to kind of ignore the situation right, right. right? Oh my gosh which is which is actually yeah i would say that the latter part which you just said can be uh, uh, can have you know adverse effects. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you continue to not talk about it, and yeah. some you know what this is the kind of issue that is prevalent in in some of the things that I've been experiencing uh, uh, both for myself and as you know a helping professional mm -hmm. as, as a counselor because you know pe people don't communicate. No. People don't communicate, and as mm -hmm. you as you spoke on, sometimes whenever you know you see your kid going through it, that can not only is that is that you know, a triggering thought for your own trauma, it's it, sometimes it can exacerbate because you're like, oh my gosh, now my now, you know my child is going through this. Mm -hmm. You know, I I rather go through it myself. I don't yeah. want my child to go through it. So I mean, that is that's just a phenomenal way that you brought that up. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, and you you know, touching base on it's communication is just not there. Like it, and I don't want to say like it used to be because you know I do think you know we have you know progressed with communication and people sharing thoughts and feelings mm -hmm. but this is a social media world now right. so right. it is right. a lot of you know I'm gonna Facebook and Instagram and Twitter which is completely okay but maybe using it to your benefit right. rather than <laughs> kind of saying I don't need any interpersonal communication I don't need to talk face to face I have A B and C right. and sometimes I find it with the parents that instead of being transparent with their on our daughter and saying, listen, this is what I went through, this is my experience, this is how I overcame it, they kind of just direct them sometimes to the internet and say, well, here's some good resources mm. for you to look at, mm. which are great resources, but I think the daughter or son would connect better if they listen to like a family member or someone close to them actually going through it. And maybe why are they not, why, you know, what's, you know, so this is now this is therapist stuff. But if that's not happening, why is it not happening? Yeah. You know, you know, you know, even if you direct them to, to that information, you know, why is there why is there not a conversation that's yeah. not happening with that? Or why is there not a conversation to even address? Because sometimes, you know, bring them but it's it's like we're we're alluding to, it can be very uncomfortable uncomfortable conversations. Yeah. And it's okay. It's uncomfortable. Yes, you know, like yes. parents, you don't have to have the right answer and that's okay. Exactly. Tell your son or daughter exactly. that you don't you don't have to be that hero because your daughter da your daughter or son will see you regardless like that you can say i don't know the answer right, right now but i'm here for you and i'm going to do whatever i can wow. to be here and sit here you know wow. you don't need to have answers wow. even as therapists yes. we don't always have answers yes. you know but we sit there and we work with our students on what they're going through we bring ourselves down mm -hmm. to what they're going through and experiment mm. or experiencing we don't always have the answers like mm. that you know why that's so powerful what you know, I remember whenever I was the, the uh, director for um, one of the, of the human service agencies, um, 
uh, in Pittsburgh, I interviewed this guy, right? Okay. And um, I forgot what question I had asked him, and he said, you know, he said, well, you know what, Sean, sometimes it's, you know, we have to teach parents that, you know, it's it's okay to say, I don't know, to yeah. my kid. And something about that, you know, and I was much younger than I am now, but mm -hmm. something about him just having the transparency, you know, yep. being transparent enough to say that he didn't know, yep. I had a lot of respect for that. Because yep. what, what do people do whenever they don't know? Um, well, maybe go ask them or I don't want to talk about this right, right. now. Right. I don't want to talk about this right, right. now. Well, let's talk about it later. Right. It's like, okay, right. well later you're still not going to know. Right, right. right? Well, look, let's, uh, we're going to take our first break um, and we're going to come back and I'm going to ask Sam some specific questions about some of the things that maybe she has been through in high school, some of the mistakes that she has made and uh, see what she has to say. And we'll be right back with the power of perspective. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Welcome back, welcome, welcome, welcome back to the Power of Perspective, the talk show. Thank you for coming back. Um, we have Samantha Pringle. Again, she is a mental health uh, social worker that specializes in working with college age kids. Uh, Sam, I wanted to ask you, you know, about some specific things that you had been through as far as mistakes, right? And, okay. and, 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 and I'm, I'm, I'm so, again, I'm so thankful for, for you coming on the show because I know that you are transparent and I know that you have the courage to speak about some things in depth. And I think that it can help, you know, other people. I wanted to have a woman on the show, you know, and I definitely want to have more women on the show to get you all's perspective. What, what, um, can you speak about maybe anything relationship wise we, we work with, yeah. with a lot of people who, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who, who come to us because you know they're in high school or college not to say that it's puppy love but they're having a lot of relationship uh a dilemma so what was your high school college experience like all right high school you know there wasn't really um a set commitment that i went through in high school one because i mean i was a cheerleader i was in a lot of groups growing up in high school so i that was like my friends were my girlfriends mm -hmm. um really didn't have time for boyfriends um, that could have maybe been the start of my mistakes because I really didn't understand mm. committing, That's you know, in high school. I didn't, like, being a cheerleader in high school, you got a lot of attention from boys. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of that attention and flirting, and that's what I was used to being engaged in. I mean, mm. relationships here and there, but they kind of went out the window when I was receiving at constant attention from other people because mm. I was so used to that like I it was kind of out of the norm to be like okay ignore all the other attention you stick with this one person yeah. you know and I don't want to blame that you know being on a cheerleader but it's kind of just what my friends and I were kind of exposed to yeah. um, when I I did have a serious relationship though my senior year I kind of settled down a little bit um, going into college and the experience you know when you're going from high school to college is well, I'm, we're gonna make this work. Mm -hmm. You know, we're gonna do everything we can, even though you're back home and they're going to a different college, like I'm gonna do everything to make this work. And some people can do that. And I, you know, bow down to them that mm -hmm. they can do that. But college is such a huge stepping stone mm -hmm. in your life. It is an adjustment and it is a life changer. Yes, and college is too, when you really find out who you are. Mm -hmm. You really are kind of experimenting and you kind of leaving college, hopefully, you know, you identify a self for yourself. Like, this is who I really am. So when you have that life in high school, it's really hard to maybe retain the relationship you have because you're changing and you're not changing with that person. Mm. You know, you guys are changing in different ways. Mm. Um, another thing that I think I struggled and my mistake was in college is they always have those, you know, rumors that you need to find the person you're gonna marry in college. Because after you leave college, you know, that's the only time you're gonna get to social interact with Who's guys. Who's telling you that? I just like hear probably my parents. I mean, I don't even okay. blame you, parents, but yeah, parents, okay. you know, just like hearsay, like even of older people that was like, well, I met my my fiance in college. Mm -hmm. You know, like I married my college sweetheart, something of that sort. Um, and it was just kind of stuck in my mind that I needed to find my soulmate in college. Wow. You know, and it was just you. I kind of went from high school of you know, kind of just. Touch, touch in the air, not being committed to going into college, and every guy 
that paid attention to me, that wanted to be in a relationship, I was like, this is it. This is the one. You know, right? Like, and was completely devastated you when we broke up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, he, you know, they're the one. <laughs> yeah, we're soulmates. Don't tell me otherwise. You know, like, um, but it was just like, okay, this person, we get along. We're great. We've been dating for a couple months. Uh, we're gonna make it through college because there's no other changing factors. We're in the right. same environment, wow. but that's not the case. Um, college is a time, like I said, of really trying to find yourself and you can't really do that. You can't be with someone and can be committed to someone if you don't even know who you are. Let me, let me, let me, let me, you, let me cut you off for a second respectfully. You Absolutely. See, because you said three things that, that uh, caused me to think. One of the first talked about commitment. Yep. Right? So I guess you were saying like being on uh, a sports team and uh, uh, I, think, I think what you were saying was just not being able to commit to relationships. Yep. That commitment, that commitment thing is a is a big piece, and that could be a whole show in itself. But you also talked about um, you also talked about getting a lot of attention, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm thinking about is you know you know just from me going back and remember my high school days, you know, and, and you're also talking about knowing who you are, which um, very I think very few people even in college will figure out mm -hmm. who they are. But when you don't know who you are and you're getting that attention, that could be a daily mixture. Oh, a, a, a daily mixture. And then the, the third thing was, Sam, is you had said, when I, you kind of alluded to maybe how you didn't like it, and maybe that was like, a, this might be a cultural thing, but you said that you were getting told to find your soulmate early, yeah. early in high school. Now, in college. Or in college. Yeah. Now, but, but even, even with that, now you might not have liked that, and I'm thinking culturally, I don't think that there are certain cultures out there who are, are who are getting that message. I think that's actually, it, even though it, the times have changed, that's not a bad message. Yeah. Because the messages that I was getting from my peers. So you just play around. Yeah, uh, hey, now my dad was telling me, you know, I'm, I'll never forget, my dad had me in my living room. He's like, Sean, you know, don't be bringing six and seven girls up in this house. You know? And I'm thinking, Dad, are you crazy, man? <laughs> I know 10 girls who just gave me their phone number last week. <laughs> You know I me, mean? but 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 my my friends, you know, you know, this is why I'm so excited uh, uh, about uh, doing this, this manhood uh, training. Because my friends are telling me like, nah, man, you know, you to be a man, you gotta have a bunch of chicks, a bunch of girls. So even though you're talking about about you know you know some of your own experience, I think that there's like some themes in there, commitment yep. or lack of commitment. Yeah. You know, uh, not knowing who you are mm -hmm. and 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 how that relates to you know just kind of absorbing. All this attention that you're getting and how how good it makes you feel. Yeah. Because if you if you have an awareness of who you are, the attention you might like it, but it's not really going to dictate your behavior. Well, because you kind of know what you're looking for. Right? Exactly. Then, you know. Exactly. So, like you were saying, when you don't know who you are, and you're just going out there, like specifically to parties, wherever, and you're getting attention from whoever. Right. Bad attention is still good attention because it's attention. There it is. There it is. You know, it doesn't yeah. matter who it's from, yeah. what they look like, what they're doing at the time. It's making you feel good because they're, they're, all their attention is on you. You may, like the next day, there's been times where I was like, what was I thinking? Right. You know, but at that moment, you're still like, well, this makes me feel good. Exactly. I'm going to go along with exactly. it. Or you're saying, when you figure out who you are, yes. then you kind of, you already know what you want because you know how you feel. You already identified yourself. So it's like, eh, not, mm. not today mm. kind of mm. thing. But I wanted to bring up, because you made a good point, so I said, you know, I heard from like, you know, older women and some friends, like, I'm going to find that one in college. Yeah. A woman's perspective, yeah. maybe. You know, we go into school and uh, yes, we do. We, we play around and everything, uh, but we want to find that person we want to be with, right? Well, in, in girls, this, girls? Maybe, okay. I mean, my group of friends, com okay. we're common with that. Okay, okay. But the guys, you know, most certainly would see college as, dude. I'm surrounded by so many girls. This right. is it. This is my chance. Yep, you yep, know, like yep. I wasn't I wasn't popular in high school, but college is a different thing for right. me. Like they're not thinking. Right. You know, the norm right. of the male population in college is not thinking. Wow. Oh, I can't wait to find you know that one person. Right. It's like that's very interesting. You know, it's like how do I wrap my numbers up? <laughs> <laughs> which is which is a mistake. Yeah. Which is a mistake. I mean, you know, I, I remember I had a friend in high school one time, and uh, you know, he, he's a he's a great human being. You know, I, I truly uh, have a great appreciation for him. But I remember we were in high school, and uh, we stand we stand in, in, in front of the school that we played basketball for, and you know, guys, you know, guys talk about what guys talk about. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and and I think I asked him. I said, I said, well, you talking about all these girls? I said, how many how many girls you've been with? Yeah. 
The number, I'm not sure what the number was, but the number was crazy. Oh, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine. Even, we were, I was, I, I think I was 16. He was a year younger than me. Wow. I said, whoa, dude. Dude, you're 15 years old. 15? He was 15 oh, years old. Oh, my goodness. Old. And he had slept with more people than the age he is. <laughs> it is hey. Hey, we we can multiply. <laughs> <laughs> we can multiply the age, but that, but but that that's an excellent point because you know we don't always talk about some of the results that come with the with these with this promiscuous behavior. Yeah. You know, even think about you know what doing drugs over the course of a long period of time and the health issues, or maybe having you know if you're promiscuous and you're not being protected, babies that can come. Yeah. You know, these 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 are mistakes that can that can have lifelong effects. Absolutely, and bringing like the parents perspective kind of back into it and this might be you know like um, kind of an uneasy topic to like kind of digest for parents but as parents you don't want anything bad to happen to your kids when they right. go to school right. you want them to find that person right? right you want them to be happy you don't want them to engage in partying and promiscuous ask acts and you don't want them to do drugs or whatnot so what do we do as parents we constantly don't do this don't do that don't do that right. you know helicopter right. you know and just making sure they don't do that but what they don't understand is kind of playing the opposite effect yes. you keep pushing me and pushing me and tell me not to do this i gotta get straight a's and i have to i can't be partying because i have to think about you know my degree and where i'm going to go from there the thing is mm. you can't focus too much on the future because you have to live in the present mm. you have to enjoy yourself if you don't do that your future is not going to be what you wanted it to be mm. and i think sometimes with i know you know with some of the mistakes that i had made you know, it was just like constant pressure, mm -hmm. you know, from not necessarily my family. My mom was the most supportive person in the world. She was, she found out one time, you know, you did this, you drank, you smoked, <laughs> but hey, I used to do it too. Like, yeah, yeah. and that's what made it comfortable was like, I kind of did it. She's like, you know what? Well, what did we learn from this? Right. Not rather than harping and yelling and screaming, mm. you know, because I then feel like some students will then be like, well, you know, excuse my language, like, F you, mom, I'm going to go do this thing because right. you're mad at me, you're right. yelling at me, you're putting a lot of pressure. Wow, wow. That's, that's, I mean, that, that's, that's phenomenal. I wish, uh, oh, you know, I wish that your mom could have given uh, my dad a little, I <laughs> my dad uh, was, she a, was awesome. he was a great dad too, but, you know, my dad believed in, uh, in, uh, in uh, swinging, swinging around belts and things, and things like that. So that's another mistake I made too, is, is not learning from my father's belt, which is, which is a joke. We live in a different day, I'm not encouraging uh, 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 child abuse, but, yeah. hey. Um, hey, we're going to go to uh, another break, and whenever we come back, I want to delve into, into more of uh, maybe some relational mistakes that we made, and maybe also some other behavioral mistakes. And then what I would like to do is talk about, you know, some solutions that we can give parents mm -hmm. and people in general to be able to learn from and avoid these mistakes. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with the power of Perspective, the top show. So welcome, welcome, welcome back to the Power of Perspective, the talk show. Again, my name is Sean Francis Coleman, and this is Samantha Pringle. Uh, we've been really getting into uh, some of the mistakes that we had made uh, with relationships, you know, in high school and college. And I just wanted to, I wanted to share. I, it, it's nice to hear a woman talk about some of the uh, of the female mindset because I had never even until now even thought about the fact that some women go to college planning to meet their soulmate. Mm -hmm. And it made me think about college. I'm like, you know what? Well, geez, when I went to uh, my undergrad, there were a lot of people who kind of get into serious relationships. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dude, like, we're in college, man. Why are you doing that? Yeah. <laughs> right? You yeah. know what I mean? But one of the mistakes that I made with my relationship in, in high school was being with, and no disrespect to this young lady because I, I still know her, but, um, you know, she, she would tell you that we just weren't the right match, but we stayed together for an entire year. Yep. And I mean, I was not even myself. Like, yeah. I, she was she was one way, and like, it was like I had to adapt to her, um, you know, gotcha. and like, I couldn't be me. It was like, for a whole year, I wasn't shown. And it was, I, I just think back, like, wow, like, that was a whole year where I wasn't uh, myself. How, like, painful was that? Like, to, like, be completely different? Like, were you, did you convince yourself after a while that, like, you were this type of person? Like, not only with her, but, like, around your friends and all that, or? No, you know, you know what? To be transparent, you know what kept us together? Sex. Sex. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we were, I, I was 17 years old. I had lost my virginity at 16, you know? You know, it was, it was 
sex, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes I always say, you know, uh, 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 s love is not within sex. Sex is within love, you know, and as young, younger people, we tend to believe that that's the other way around. So, I mean, does that, does that hit to anything either? Maybe you haven't experienced it, but maybe you have vicarious experience and maybe friends. Well, I mean, you know, in college particularly, and I think some women struggle with this too, you kind of test out a relationship and maybe great at first and yeah you know maybe the only thing that is enjoyable is the sexual acts but you don't connect emotionally you don't right. connect, you know physically other than you know the gauging of the act right. and um but what i what i did was you just stay in that relationship and you ask yourself why right you go and do other things like right. you're getting attention from other guys like i mean i was in a relationship majority of my college career mm -hmm. and this particular person didn't go to college mm -hmm. like didn't go to my college mm -hmm. and I stayed in the relationship and I asked myself so many times why like mm -hmm. I that's the biggest thing I will say I regret is I really didn't get to experience myself in relationships mm -hmm. in college um, I mean I was on the dance team so I was exposed to like you know again getting the attention but I was like at that point I saw college and I was like I'm committed you know mm -hmm. to this person mm -hmm. But we didn't get along. We were a horrible couple, but we stayed together. Is that, Why? Is that, right. Why? Why? And it's like, <laughs> right. and what it is, is that one word, comfortable. Mm. You're comfortable with that person. Mm. It would be too uncomfortable to go through the breakup process and for a day or two be upset because you don't want to, you know, have emotions. You don't want to deal with mm. the consequence would be. So what's better? Let me just stick it out because I'm comfortable with it mm. and just do what I'm doing. Mm. Like, what, what is that? That's horrible. It is. It you is. know, you're yeah. not even, that's not even a relationship. You're doing more harm to yourself than good. I'm, I'm reading this book right now. It's called, um, it's called Lies at the Altar, uh, The Truth About Great Marriages. And one of the things that she says is that, you know, uh, uh, she says, to love, to love is not to suffer. Mm -hmm. You know, to love, and that, that kind of what you said makes me uh, uh, think about that. Um, you, you know what, that, I think, I think that what you're saying is kind of the same, a very similar experience. You know that that I was in. I mm -hmm. think that also relationship. And, and it's powerful how you said um, you didn't get to experience yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was that was deep. Yeah. That was deep. So you're saying that you didn't get to experience like the college experience or yourself as Samantha and growing. I think Samantha honestly and growing. Like I would say that I could you know not ask for a better place where I'm at now. Mm -hmm. And I honestly couldn't tell you how I got to this place. Mm -hmm. um, you know because I didn't have that experience, but. I was engaged socially, with had an awesome friends, did great academically, but I found myself actually being more, I don't know how to use the word, more, more outgoing with my sexuality in college mm -hmm. because I was committed to this relationship, didn't want to break up with him, didn't want to be with him though, saw many people that I obviously had a better connection with, mm -hmm. but didn't engage in it. And that ought, like, and then I just would put things in my head, well, like, well, you're not good enough for them, or they're not going to be interested in you. Mm -hmm. And I think it was because of the relationship I was in, you know, it was just like, well, you're in this relationship, and this is how you are in this relationship. Mm -hmm. How could you be a good person in this relationship? Wow. So what you're saying is, is that really, what I'm hearing you say is that on one, Maybe some of that relationship that you had with person A took away some self-love. Yes. Mm -hmm. And also, like in this book I'm reading, she says, you know, you have to be whole before you be joined. Yes, absolutely. You know, yeah. how many, how many, young, and again, we're talking about an age group where I don't want to, I don't want to discredit relationships that people are going through in high school and college because they're young. Yeah. Because sometimes it really can work and it is true love. Yeah. But it's in, in today's society, maybe even generations back. You know, is the maturity level there where you can really, really, really have a strong foundation to be in true love, to, to, to have self-awareness, to even get to that point where you can fall in love? I mean, just from my personal experience, I, I, I'm not so sure because one, you're trying to find yourself and like you were saying, you cannot be committed, you cannot be whole with someone else until you are whole yourself. Right. So you can't give that person everything you have because you haven't even figured it out right. yet. You know, and you know, as we all know, college is an experience. Like, party life, yeah. you know, like social life. Oh, yeah. So you you want to get all that out. You know, you want to get all that out yeah. because there's so many times where I've heard people say, oh, I used to do that back in my college days. You know, it's always back to like, I'm used to do that in my, right. back in my college days. Right. But I think like, I mean, I particularly was so set on like, I need, like we were talking about, I need to find someone now. I need to figure this 
out now, but it's okay even if you're after college that you're learning to find yourself after oh, college. Course. You know, because I mean, me personally, I'm in an amazing relationship now and I'm just learning about being in that relationship and who I truly am. And I'm 26 years old. Like, you know, like you don't have to figure it out mm -hmm. in college. You don't have to like master it. And I think that's some of the things the students don't understand. I'm so happy that you said that before we transition on. I'm so happy you said that because I want of course, because what you just said actually contrasts from what uh, the author was saying, Dr. Robin L. Smith. She's saying that you have to be whole before you be joined. However, however, that may that may be the case for some people, but as you're saying, you're finding out a lot about more about yourself because you're within a healthy relationship. relationship. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I, I had the same thing with my wife. Yeah. You know, whenever I met my wife, I started to really, because she challenged me in different ways yeah. that other people didn't challenge me, yeah. I'm like... I started to grow. Yeah. I got a master's degree. I started up a company. Yeah. You know, I'm starting to really step into who I am. Yeah. So, you don't always have to become whole first, but if you get with the right person, you know, and that's another thing how we know when it is the right person or if it's the right person, you know, you can actually, you know, you can find, you know, your true self within that relationship and and and, and gain some individuality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I wanted to um, uh, wanted to uh, transition and ask you, you know, about some other things, right? Because when I think about high school and college, I think about opportunities missed out on. Yeah, yes. You know what I mean? Between that, you were a dancer, you were a cheerleader, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was a musician and I was a basketball yeah. player. I was probably a better musician than I was a basketball player. Mm -hmm. But I, I took my, my teacher always told me like you're taking your talent for granted, and you're going to regret this one day, and I surely did. Yeah. So is there anything like is there? It might be after school programs. It might be. You know, maybe a sports team you didn't play for. Is there anything that your high school offered or that your college offered that you look back on now like, man, why did I do that? I should have took advantage of that. I mean, being being like cheerleader in high school, like was a full time job, you know, being on a spirit squad and competition squad. And I didn't see myself missing out back then on anything because the cheerleaders were my group of friends, mm -hmm. you know. So it was like, oh, we, we traveled all weekend, but I was with my group of friends. But what I was stating before was like I missed out on experiencing relationships right. and like interpersonal connections with people in mm -hmm. high school. Um, college, I was in the dance team. That took up so much time. I love it. But I also didn't get to do other activities that I might have been, you know, enjoyed in. Like yeah. I liked art. I liked doing like different like, you know, <laughs> programs, but I never thought about it. And then too, I mean, academic wise, instead of like sit sitting in class, I got out early, mm -hmm. you know, because we would go travel with the teams, mm -hmm. and I got caught up in, well, I don't need to do this work, mm -hmm. you know, like, I, I'm just going to go travel with the sports team, like, I, I got caught up in, like, being, putting my, you know, activities in front of my academics, mm -hmm. you know, rather than, like, keeping them kind of equal. Imbalanced. Imbalanced, yeah. Do you have any, do you have any regrets now, or do you think that maybe it's just, it was just, uh, 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 necessity, just one of those harsh necessities. Um, I have regrets in in some of the like the friendships that I could have made, but I didn't take the time to make. Mm. You know, um, I'm so close with some of the dance friends, but there were I can get along with anyone. You know, mm. like I just sometimes I I I'm not gonna talk myself up, but I feel like I have that personality yeah. that I can really get along with anyone. And there were so many people that I kind of just skimmed by, but I never took the time to really develop a friendship because it was just like. Well, here, dance team. Right. You know, right. so I kind of missed out on the different interactions I could have had with like a diverse people. When right. you go to college, you get so caught up in maybe one activity you're involved in. Yes. You know, like maybe like PA students here, only friends with PA students. <laughs> right. You're that's like, true. why? Why are you that's only true. friends with PA that's, students? That's you know, like why aren't you friends with anyone else? <laughs> you know, like I was one of those people, only friends with the right. dance team. Right. You know, but then that makes you get into a clique, and it's just like you need to experience other friendships. Oh, man, man. That's that, what I regret. That is, that is so powerful. Because another, I'm, I'm, I don't want to call myself, you know, an avid reader, but I do, you know, thumb through books and I, and I pick up the parts I like. That's so powerful because in, in, in the book called The Medici Effect, he says that one of the benefits of having uh, a diverse awareness of, of uh, different cultures is that it blocks you from having. A dogmatic or a, a subjective, a subjective view of your own culture, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Whenever you are aware of how different people live, you know it kind of opens you up to to other worlds. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that that's a mistake that people make. Yeah. In high school and college, like, nope, I only chill with the basketball team. Nope, yep. I only chill with the soccer team yep. or or with cheerleaders or X, Y, and Z. If you are, so now we talk about some solutions. 
if you are, you know, uh, 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 experiencing, I don't want to say experiencing any relationship uh, a, a dilemmas, but we're saying that open your mind, mm -hmm. open your relationships up to other relationships. Mm -hmm. And really, this might this might even this might even take down some of the violence. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? Please, I, I completely <laughs> agree. Like, it's just you can too identify you like you can find out more about yourself you wouldn't think that you're like this doesn't make sense but being exposed to different cultures different people different relationships will cause you to question your yes. own actions yes. and be like okay well i kind of see where they're coming from i kind of right. like that and then right. you're slowly but surely finding and identifying yourself okay. but you are so caught up on i only hang out with this crew i only hang out with this crew this is my group and it's like why yes why? Why would you not want to be exposed to different people and learn about them? You know why? You know why? They're scared. I, yeah, they're scared. They're scared. And you said it earlier. It's the power of that of, of, peer, of peer pressure. Oh. You know what I mean? Yes. You know very well that there's people, there's kids out there, and even some adults though today who I might like person B, mm -hmm. but because of my group says person B is bad. Then I, yep, I'll go along with my group. Yeah. Because we're strong in numbers. Right. So we're too scared to venture out on our own and befriend that person because then we find ourselves just alone two people this group is bigger mm, mm, right mm, yes. it's all about being like people are so caught up in like what well, everyone needs to like me i care so much about whatever what everyone thinks That's a good another point. solution you know okay yes you want people to like you i totally get that but try liking yourself first <laughs> before you're just like i want everyone to like me their thoughts and feelings matter the most to me the most important thing is you so your emotions matter the best your feelings matter the best who you want to hang out with is who matters the best not what everyone else thinks mm. i, I want to add to that but i think it would be disingenuous for me to add to that because what? well because i think you said it pretty well no please and not now because that's something that I feel like that's a topic that people know but they don't do. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. People know but they don't do that. They like, don't practice. They don't, what practice. They, do. they don't practice what they preach. Like people think it's selfish. Like you know, I talk to a lot of people in my private practice. You know, and just just in counseling. You know, you know, you know, in general, people think that it's it's being selfish to care more about yourself. And I have to explore with people. Like you know what? I have a. A wife that I'm in love with. Mm -hmm. I love her, and I have a son that I'm in love with our relationship. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, even though I love them so much, I love myself more than I love them. But it allows me to give them yep. so much love. It's a circle. It's a it's a, it's a whole circle. Yes. It's a yes. Whole circle. And, and whenever you're at like if you're at, if you're at forty percent of self love, you can only give forty percent love. Oh. You can't give a hundred. You can only give a hundred percent of that. That 40. Well, that's why I tell a lot of the clients that come in relationship problems, like, you know, like, I'm not, like, I love this person, I do anything for them, I want to, you know, be there for them when they have issues, and I want to be that person. Okay, so who's that person for you? Right. What are you doing for right. yourself? Well, nothing. Right. I, I don't matter. Right. And it's like, well, then you are, you're not giving everything that you honestly exactly. think you're giving exactly. to that person exactly. because you're not taking care of yourself. Mm. You, you know, um, uh, I thank you so much. <laughs> For being on the show, um, I just wanted to uh, say that and to say that I appreciate the work that you do. Um, can we let's let, let let's finish this particular topic okay. just just by uh, talking a little bit about some of the underlying things, right? Because we talked about relationships, we mm -hmm. talked about missing out opportunities, maybe because of you know different reasons. We talked about maybe not opening opening ourselves <coughs> to different cultures and groups of people in high yeah. school or college or maybe even in our community yeah. because we don't have a sense of self. Sometimes there's like an underlying it's like an underlying reason. Not sometimes, there is an underlying reason to all of this. And I remember being in high school and I used to never talk about this Sam, but I, I you if you would have looked at me in high school, mm -hmm. you know, and I and I am I'm, I'm very I've seen pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm very, you know, I'm not an arrogant person at all, but if you'd have looked at me, you know, from my whole life, you know, you know, my mom and friends, oh, you know, you're a little handsome guy, you know, you're so cute, X, Y, and Z. You know, I'm, I'm respectful, always been nice, I've been an athlete. People always liked me, right? Mm -hmm. From the outside, it looked like I should have been the class president, the superstar on, and on the basketball team, but I was actually going through some, some inner turmoil, and I didn't know why I was going through it for yep. four years, yep. right? And because I was going through that, that kind of blocked me from being more outgoing, yep. you know what I mean? And I wish I would have maybe had somebody to talk to, not that I didn't have anybody to talk to, but I just chose to keep it in. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of my biggest mistakes, because I feel like I could have been bigger. And I was, I was, I was, 
I did well in high school, but I felt like I could have got better grades, had better relationships, um, did more with, with different organizations, but because I had the inner turmoil mm -hmm. that I never opened up to, to nobody about, I was blunted. Yeah, well, it's funny you say that you, you kind of, it prevented you from being like more outgoing, because I had the exactly the same experience, mm -hmm. but I did the reverse effect. I was so outgoing in high school and college and would just talk to anyone, any problems they had, come to me, come yeah. to me, because I wanted to stay distracted from what I was wow. going through. Wow. I wanted to engage in what anyone else was going through. I wanted to talk to anyone because it kept my mind off wow. what I was going through. And what I've learned about myself is it actually has been more beneficial for me to take time to myself, to say, I, I love you to death, but today I just... It, I need to be by myself. Yes. You know, where yes. I would never have said that before because wow. I didn't want wow. to have thoughts going on. I wanted to be outgoing. I wanted to talk to everyone. I never took the time to really sit with my own thoughts and feelings. Wow. wow. So, like, I went through exactly the same thing. Yes. Like, depression. Like, yes. just a lot of anxiety going on. A lot of things that I just was like, no, I can't handle what this might bring up. What emotion right. I might experience. Exactly. You know, and exactly. you just say... I'm just going to keep talking. Keep, and I didn't realize that until after. Exactly. I was just like, oh, I'm so outgoing. Everybody <laughs> loves me. You know, like, I'm just this person. Right. I Like, I can't unconsciously knew I had stuff going on. But it wasn't until after where I was like, that's why I was the way I was. Exactly. Exactly. I think that's what I talked about in, in, yeah. in the new blog. Mm -hmm. and I wonder, I wonder, that's interesting. I wonder how many other people are going through that. Yeah. And maybe, maybe, you know, either, either in it or out of it that, Constantly or constantly, unconsciously, you don't have that awareness. Yeah. Wow, that's powerful. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Miss Samantha Pringle, I truly appreciate you very much. Uh, you, you've you been an excellent, excellent guest. Uh, I knew that we were going to have I like Chipper Jabber. <laughs> but you know what? It was beneficial for yeah. myself and I think Oh, of course, me too. Well. I love talking with you. So. And I love talking with you as well. Well, um, how can the people, if if people want to maybe get in contact with you, maybe because they, you know, I think that you hit a, hit a chord with a, lot, with a lot of people, how can they maybe send you some questions, maybe contact you, maybe they have some kids, or maybe they have some personal things, things that they're going through and they want Samantha Pringles? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I send it to my business email, please. Um, it being also the Duking email as well. But um, Pringles, that's really cool. Like, you know, um, the students all love it when I tell them, you know, my email is Pringles. They're like, oh, that's awesome. Um, but, you know, P-R-I-N-G-L-E-S -E at D-U-Q dot E-U. I'll answer anything you want. And then if we want to talk further from there, then, you know, I'll give you some more information. Yes, yes. And make sure that you hit her up, please. You know, uh, uh, she, as you, as you can tell from the last... Uh, 30, 35 minutes, she has a lot of great information, you know, she's been through some things, so she's not just speaking from the book knowledge, mm -hmm. um, and that's the type of people that I want to have on the show, you know, people that, that, that can speak to you from experience, but also from, you know, uh, personal research uh, as well. So, again, thank you very much, Sam. Thank you. Uh, make sure that you all go and uh, purchase uh, the books that we have. We have some classic books, you know, I'm privileged to have people come up to me and tell me that, you know, the books that I've written are timeless. I'm so appreciative of that. They are they are phenomenal. I All read right. one. You can watch my interview on one of them. It's the relationship that I figure. Yes, yes. And I'm thankful for that as well. You know, but you know, you know, go invest in yourself. And if you don't buy our products, go buy products from somewhere. Just invest in yourself. Invest in your family. Invest in your household. You can reach me at www.perspectve.com. Make sure that you take the eye out of perspective because sometimes to broaden your own horizons, you've got to take yourself out of your own perspective. This is The Power of Perspective, the talk show, and my name is Sean Francis Coleman. Peace.